Welcome to the tutorial breakdown setup. In this tutorial, I'm going to help you get set up for the breakdown process. But before we begin, I'd like to make you aware of a default setting in your timeline. So if you click on the black plus sign beside your layer name, you'll uncollapse it and then you can see all the transformations that are available when you animate. Um, such as the position, scale, rotation, skew, etc. So if your layer looks like this and your position, your X, Y, and Z positions are separate, then you're good to go. This is what you want to see. However, if your positions look something like this, the path and the velocity, um, but no X, Y, Z position separated, then you definitely want to change a setting in your preferences. Um, this method of locking your X, Y, and Z together under the velocity category is um, really best used for non-cutout animation. And what it does is it gives you a nice smooth curve as you're animating. However, um, when you're doing cutout animation, it's better to have your, your position separate. Um, and you'll see this especially for the Z position where you need to nudge an arm or a leg forward or backwards. And you want to key this without dragging everything else along with it. Um, or forcing the X and Y position with it um, while you're keyframing. So to change this preference, you would go to uh, the top menu and select Preferences. And once again, for Windows users, so that's under Edit Preferences. Then under the General tab and under the Settings heading here, you would um, enable both the default separate position for pegs as well as the default separate positions for elements um, options and this of course will by default separate your positions for a peg or an element which is also a layer um, in your timeline and then you can click on OK or enter to validate your changes so now if you create a new layer in your timeline I'm going to uncollapse it again you can see that once again the positions are separated so I'm just going to delete these two layers Okay, so like anything else, there are several methods to breaking down a character. Um, the one I'm going to show you is a, sort of a cutout method. There's another method that we recommend in the user guide, which is the tracing method. And that's when you would actually uh, use your rough drawing. You probably wouldn't go as far as this. And you would trace a clean arm on a different layer and color it in. And then trace, you know, a, a, a clean leg. Um, over your rough on a separate layer and color it in. And of course, you would look at this rabbit as um, a bunch of separate but full parts. So your leg would actually come up and be cleaned up with a rounded edge or a blunt edge, but that would extend beyond the rope. And you'd see that really as a full object on its own. But what we're going to do is actually um, use the cutter tool and cut out in, in various ways both saving our original drawing or completely separating and breaking our drawing apart. Um, but once again, I really want you to take a look at this object and see where you would start breaking things down in terms of big parts. And then we'll focus on the smaller parts after. So the biggest parts we're looking at here is really the torso, the arms, um, the legs, um, and the head. And then we can then later on break down to hands, ears, feet, etc. So the last thing I'd like you to think about is your layer naming convention. And although this might seem like a trivial decision, as you start breaking down a cutout character, you're going to start to realize just how many layers there really are. So let's go to the timeline and create a new layer and decide together what we should name it. So in practical naming convention, you always have your character's full name or at least uh, initials to represent the character. So in my case, I'm going to name it KR for Karate Rabbit then underscore, and if you're trying to name a body part that has a double, such as the arms, the legs, the feet, there's obviously a lot of symmetry in the body, so you have a two of a lot of things. You have to decide whether you're going to name them right and left, back and front, or one and two. So the downside of naming the limbs right and left is that if you decide you want to make a flipped version of the profile or three-quarter view, I mentioned that before, you can do that using a peg, um, all the uh, parts that you named with an R for right will then become the left side and all the uh, parts that you named with an L for left will then become the right side. 
Um, not to mention that for some reason the human brain has, a, I think, like a dysfunction when it comes to seeing right and left. A lot of times people get confused. Is it my right or the character's right? It's actually the character's right and left. But in saying all of that, a lot of people really still do use the RL, right-left, convention when naming. Um, I think what I'm going to do is use one and two. And whatever you decide uh, to use, as long as you stay consistent throughout all your poses, it really doesn't matter uh, which naming convention you use. So I'm going to use Karate Rabbit underscore 01 and then underscore again and this time you put the name of the body part. I'm going to use a complicated one and that would be the lower leg here. Some people use lower leg, other people use calf, shin, tibia. I've seen all sorts of things um, for the lower leg. I guess I'll use tibia, the anatomical term, and then hit enter uh, to verify the layer name. So that's pretty much it for the tutorial breakdown setup. Stay tuned for the next tutorial breaking down the main parts.